just found, I think I found some big silver here. Uh, <laughs> it's a walking Walker. liberty. I... That is a great find. I'm happy. Silver War bullet number two. It's a cannonball. No, it can't be. Why can't it? Hey guys, today's gonna be probably a little unusual. Uh, we'll see how things play out. Um, today, actually, I'm sitting at the golf course right now. Uh, we're gonna start out here. Uh, we may be here all day, uh, or we may jump around a bit. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what's going to happen. Uh, I do know that the Van Skyver brothers will not be joining me today. Uh, they got other things going on in their lives that they need to take care of with. with so, uh, you know, we'll let them have their fun and, and we'll go out and have our fun, right? Uh, also, today, I'm going to be joined by someone new. Uh, you haven't seen him on this channel. Uh, I had a co-worker walk up to me at the beginning of the week and apparently he uh, has been watching quite a few of my videos. A few months ago he had bought a Garrett AT Pro, my detector of choice, uh, to take to the beach. And I guess he just really hasn't had much success in getting it to, to work or, or understanding how it works. So he asked that uh, I get him out on a hunt somewhere and I show, give him a few pointers, show him how it works, and uh, see if we can get him uh, to be able to use this thing uh, well enough to find something. We'll see how this works. Uh, shouldn't be too hard, it's not a complicated machine. But um, from there, you know, we, we may skip around a bit. I, I don't know, I, I really don't know. Um, but we'll find out by the end of the video uh, where we hunt, who all we meet. Uh, we'll find out how it goes. I hope you have a lot of fun, guys. Uh, it's uh, we're always going to have fun out here. So here we go. All right. Uh, while I wait for uh, uh, my coworker to show up here. Uh, I just heard from him a little while ago. Uh, he's stuck in traffic. Uh, I thought maybe I'd show you something. It's a little lesser known than its famous counterpart, Area 51. Um, you know, Area 51 is known for uh, back engineering alien technology, I guess. So, this place is called Area 3. I'm surprised I can get this close to it. This place is known a little bit lesser for uh, experimentation with different colored Velcro. Also it's known for back engineering the soda can. Two very not so spectacular things today, but back when they first came out, you know, they were like state of the art, amazing. So, this is called Area 3. And you can see it's just kind of set into this hillside. And through those doors, it goes down some stairs, a few flights. Let's see if we can get you in there. I don't know if you can see in there. Obviously, I'm completely full of it. Not Area 3. What this is, is one of two local uh, water pumps. 
uh, this area used to have a military base uh, and uh, they wanted to bring water from uh, uh, town in order to do that they had to have this pump and another pump I guess kind of like a relay system to bring water to the base that's all it is ah, that's cool anyhow uh, leave it to me to come up with a stupid story so I just uh, I just showed you that uh, uh, water pump area and Bill Thompson just pulled up so we got old Bill here with us for a little bit maybe we'll get a few a little bit swinging in before uh, uh, my co-worker Chris comes in oh he's stretching he just woke up you just wake up Bill about a half hour ago I've been good. How are you? Oh, hanging in there. That's good. He came in backwards. Took a whole lot longer. Took a whole lot longer. Especially. You did not plan accordingly. Yeah, I did. I didn't it's expect it. to hit traffic. Yeah, well. The traffic is the worst on 85 right now. Well, here he is, 40 minutes late. And he's got him an AT Pro. Chris? This is Bill. How you doing? You've seen Bill in some of my videos, haven't you? Yep. All right. Let's see what we can teach you on your machine there. You got what? This is what I found yesterday. I don't know exactly what this made of, but... Looks like a old digital watch from the 70s, doesn't it? Like the Seiko or whatever it was called. Seiko? I thought it was sort of like a Timex on my... And that, that is some kind of part of the plow, yeah. so... Like I said, it was farmland, so I figured... Right. Alright, well, that's kind of cool. Right, so I've been kind of giving a, a Chris a few pointers about his uh, AT Pro there, and Bill just went right ahead and started digging around uh, this uh, parking lot area here. Came up with a spoon. I don't think it's very old. It looks like it was plated at one time. Actually, it was. But, uh, that's kind of cool. Oh, we just hiked up here. I only hunted this one other time for maybe 10 minutes with Alan Van Skyver, and I think it's probably in the last video you guys saw. Uh, and uh, the only holes I dug. You know, I pull coins out of. So, uh, I never really hit this too hard, or at, you know, basically at all, except for that one time for a few minutes. So, there might be stuff here. I happen to know right there, I believe it's right there, there used to be an old house site. Somewhere in this area, there used to be a house site, and I think it was right there. But that's kind of field dirt right now, and, uh, that's kind of like a, a tee off area for when it was a golf course. So we'll see what we can find here. And this will be what, like, whatever you find will be pretty much your first official yeah. mail detecting hunt find. Well, good luck. Yeah. Hope you find silver in your first hole. That'd be cool. It happened before. Let's do it. There he goes, my metal detecting student, my pupil. Actually, I hope he does find something cool. Uh, finding good stuff actually uh, kind of helps you uh, decide whether or not this is your hobby. So, if he finds something cool, that'd be great. Bill just radioed me. He goes, oh, Michael, I think I got something good. So he's coming up the way. It's actually walking pretty fast too, so hopefully he's got something good. Right down there. Let's see what he's got. It's my first. It is what I think. It's your first, okay. Alright. And I think it dates the area. Really? Yeah. So you tell me what you think I've got. 
It's gonna be your first, it's heavy, and it dates the area. Heavy like maybe musket ball heavy? Bigger. Bigger? Uh, oh my, okay, let's see. It's about the size of my hand. And it weighs, I'm gonna guess, four or five pounds. That heavy. I would almost say cannonball. Close. Really? I need a second opinion because I think I've got a shell. You think you got an artillery shell? It's threaded on top. You you might. I don't know, look at those holes. There's like a hole there, there, and there. I have no idea yeah, this heavy. I think it's a shell. I think it's a, a mortar shell. It's a practice round. The explosive would have went and threaded into here. Yeah. And this bolted over the case. Because it's, it's got edges in it. Yeah. Man, that very well could be. I think if we clean that off, if it's got like a bluish color to it, it would be like a practice round. There's yellow. I don't know what that would be. If that would be a lichen or if that would be the actual paint. Man, I don't know. Here. I have no idea. You might, you might have something there. It was about... 10 inches down in that field. I got yellow paint, I don't have blue. Well, it fell off a school bus, obviously. Yeah, I really think it's a shell. It could be. Man, look at the... The case on it is bigger round than I can fit with one hand. The case would have been about that long. Wow. Bill, I don't know, but that's something to research. We're going to have to figure that one out. Man, that's really cool if that's what it is. I'm, that's really cool if that's what it is. I'm pretty certain it's a shell. I don't know what these, these are for. I don't either. Maybe they were to hold it when they screwed the fuse or whatever was in here. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that that's what it is. I didn't even cuss when I found it. You didn't even cuss. <laughs> I was like, what is that? <laughs> I started cleaning it off and I'm like, that's a shell. Alright, we're going to find out for sure, but uh, Bill says he's about 70-80% sure that is a round, a mortar of some sort, and I'm becoming more and more convinced from some of the things I just looked up on the phone. It's got yellow paint on. Uh, hopefully we find something out. Well, what would you find, Chris? Piece of leaf spring. Piece of leaf spring. Yep. I saw that in his hand. I thought he had himself an old uh, strap hinge or something. I got kind of excited. Yeah. It took, a, it took a lot of strength to break that thing. Yeah, well, you're a tough guy. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Chris came over here with a little difficulty with his uh, AT Pro. They weren't giving him any signal. All right, now get this. He told me it wasn't dead quiet, and so he thought, well, I'm going to run it over my steel tilt toe shoes. <laughs> he has steel toe shoes on, guys. Never know. Newbie, right? <laughs> we got working again. Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure what happened. It seemed to be just a matter of turning it off and on again. Uh, but uh, I don't know, it just acted up a bit.
So we're good to go now. Still toe shoes. <laughs> Chris just dug his first coin. Got him uh what was it, 82 dime? Mm hmm 82 dime. Did you hear how it sounded when he swung over it? Yeah. It's pretty crisp, pretty solid. Yeah. And you know what to listen to listen for and you know uh what a coin's gonna sound like uh fairly shallow to the surface. Bill's uh, over there digging a hole under that tree. Nice shade. So I've been here maybe four hours now. And this is the best thing I've found so far. 1980. Oh, I just looked too. I think it's an 86 dime. I'm sure you guys are seeing that pretty good. 80 something dime. I think it's 86. And it's nothing good. But by George, I'm going to show it off because it's the best thing I found in four hours. I hope it goes up from here. What do you think you got there? What's it ringing up? It's ringing up 82. 82? Maybe 82, but then when he raised his coil, it didn't get it. The old rusty kind. Yay! Bottle cap, huh? Yeah. Now, we're kind of calling it quits today. Um, really haven't had much luck, but uh, we're swinging on our way back to the cars. And uh, I don't think we're going to have too much of a wrap up unless we find something on the way to the cars. We'll see how this goes. Just a little bit more. What was that all about? Yes, it is. Beauty. You're the proud owner. Thanks. Bill's got him a buckle. Oh, it's not a buckle. No, it's not. What is it? That's no, not a buckle. But it's got decoration on it. Let's see what it says. Majestic. Majestic? Yeah. I don't know what it is. Ring up like a dime though. Probably a piece of refrigerator. It might be link out. That's cool. No, that's not gonna be a refrigerator. What is that? What would that be? So you're up 20 cents for the day. What would that be? It's very cool, buddy. Me neither. What is it, guys? Any ideas? That's cool, though. Alright guys, uh, that's it. That's our hunt. Uh, really, didn't find too awful much except for Bill. <laughs> he found some cool stuff. Um, let's go over what we found. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll start with my stuff. Nothing great at all. I got three dimes, some kind of electrical terminal type thing, and uh, I don't know, probably off a pair of blue jeans kind of rivet thing. Bill found, he's got a quarter, a dime, he's got all these pennies, some kind of interesting button of some sort. Uh, Glen Club, I think that was a bar, ball marker or something, it's just laying out there, he said that was a surface find. That's an ends, he got the spoon right off bat, and that was pretty cool. Then he, uh, we still don't know about this. 
yet. No, that is possibly a uh, mortar shell. That's pretty cool. Especially if it's what we think it is. Hopefully we find out or have found out already and put it on the video. And on the way out, you found this thing. Majestic. I don't know. That is really a cool piece. I, I, I'm i almost in love with that one. It will. And we got newbie here with his with his uh, steel toe shoes. <laughs> this is what you can find if you uh, wear steel toed shoes when you are metal detecting. Golf balls. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you go to a golf course. Now he, uh, this is his first time out. He uh, got himself a couple dimes and a penny. He found those, I guess, a couple of them digging holes, some of them right on the surface. I already found that when he was walking up with that. I thought he had himself a strap hinge. I, I was about ready to flip. And it turns out it's a leaf spring or something off of a, a vehicle. And uh, probably off of a cast iron sewage pipe. So, and that was found up around where we know there was a house at one point. But uh, that's it guys. That's, uh, that's our hunt for the day. We had fun. We were out for a few hours. Beautiful day. Absolutely. I, I, I wish all hunting days were nice uh, uh, fall days like this. Um, this is gorgeous. I hope you enjoyed it guys. Well there you go guys. That is our hunt and we had a lot of fun. We always do. Uh, you know, once again, we really didn't find anything except, you know, unless you were Bill and uh, uh, Bill found some pretty cool things. Uh, hopefully by now on this video we uh, uh, gave you a little bit of information what each of those things are. Uh, the one thing we think is probably a mortar shell. And the other thing we don't know, it has Majestic written on it. Oh, this is a really cool piece. Um, but um, if it weren't for those things, we wouldn't have found much at all. But either way, fines or not, we enjoy ourselves getting out. Of course, Chris, it was his first time getting out on an on actual hunt where he kind of understood a little bit more what his machine does. Uh, he seemed to have fun. Uh, I don't know. He may want to try to get on another hunt or two. Uh, we'll just see how uh, how he feels about that. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Until next time, we'll catch you later. Bye.